Hey everyone, this is Carmen Vertulo coming to you with the Fastener Training Minute from the Fastener Training Institute and AIM Testing Laboratory in beautiful El Cajon, California. Today's Fastener Training Minute is about a particular word in the Fastener installation process, and this word is snug, as in snug tight, and it normally applies to structural bolting applications. However, understanding the need for properly snug tightening joints in the structural bolt application greatly informs our understanding of all bolted joints and proper tightening of bolted joints and some of the options that we have for tightening bolted joints. So when I come back, I'm going to explain more to you about snug tight and why knowing about snug is a good thing for all bolted joints. Thanks, Carmen. This is Joe Morris with the Fastener Training Institute. It is so great to be back to in-person instruction, and I am happy to announce some news. We have our acclaimed Certified Fastener Specialist week-long program has just undergone a complete refresh. We have a brand new curriculum. With the help with, from the Industrial Fasteners Institute, our Fastener Training Week now includes a lot more interactive content, revised class presentations, and expanded course outline. So our next week-long class is going to be hosted by the Pacific West Fastener Association in Los Angeles from November 29th through December 3rd. But before that, are any of you headed to Vegas? We are. FTI will be there and we are hosting a full day seminar instructed by Carmen Vertulo and Rob LaPointe from AIM Testing Lab. We're going to present value added service or costly mistake key elements for the entire supply chain. This full day program will show users and suppliers how to detect and prevent risks associated with value added fastener services and maximize opportunity for a great result. This class is truly for everybody. So if you're a fastener distributor, if you're an end user, or if you're a manufacturer, whether you're in purchasing, sales, engineering, quality, you know what, even operations, you really need this class. Everybody does secondary processes. So you can register through the IFE website or directly with FTI. And lastly, we have recently launched a brand new webinar series called Fastener Basics Like Never Before, sponsored by Brighton Best International. It's a 21-part webinar series presented by Carmen Vertulo. You can join anytime we record all the sessions and you can still complete the full series. Come on, let's face it. Carmen, he is the master at webinar fastener training classes and he uses his talents to present each topic creatively using a ton of cameras. He's got great stories and in so much detail, you'll walk away an expert. This program covers all topics relevant to new fastener professionals and it's really a great precursor for any advanced learning that you want to do with FTI. So for more information about any of our webinars and our classes, please visit our website at www.fastenertraining.org. Thanks everyone. Now back to Carmen. Quality products, quality service, quality customers. That's 3Q Inc a fastener distributor unlike any you've worked with before. With its unique remote managed inventory stocking programs, wide array of secondary service offerings, and wholly owned cold forming capability, 3Q Inc. has been supporting fastener distributors since 2008. 3Q offers a wide range of 100% American-made fasteners, including 100% made in USA domestic lock washers, clevis pins and bolts, special ITW screw products, tap R, Boss screw, TL stud, and grip tight inserts, SEMS lock washer products, split lock washers, tooth lock washers, and square cone, as well as specialty and imported parts. Give 3Q a call today to discuss your needs and experience 3Q quality for yourself. 3Q Inc. www.3q-inc.com. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Carmen Vertulo again with the Fastener Training Minute talking to you about snug tight. In the structural bolt world, the first step in installing these bolts or tensioning them is called snug tightening. 
And what snug tightening means is we're going to install the bolts and the nuts and we're going to tighten the nuts until all the plies in the bolted joint are in what's called firm contact. That means that there is no more wiggle room in the joint. All of the bending or non-flatness of the joint that can be squeezed out has been squeezed out. And the way we do that is we start from the center of the joint or the most rigid part and we tighten these bolts even if it's just two bolts but normally there's going to be two to many to dozens even in an orderly fashion starting from the center part of the joint and working our way outward. Now one of the things that may happen is as we tighten up a joint or a bolt in the joint, the bolt next to it that has already been tightened may come loose because we've pushed the plies closer together. So it's a little bit of a back and forth double checking operation. But once all of those bolts have been snug tightened as defined by two things, one is all the plies are in firm contact and the other is the force on the nut or the torque on the nut is that which is applied by an iron worker with a normal spud wrench. So a small bolt like a half inch bolt will have a relatively small wrench. A larger bolt like a one inch bolt or an inch and a half bolt will have a larger wrench. So pretty much as tight as you can make it by wrench by hand is what snug tight is. And in many structural bolts, once we've done that, we're done. That's called a snug tighten joint. We don't need to tighten the joint any further. These are called bearing joints and essentially we're depending upon the sheer strength of the bolt to hold the steel together. One step beyond that, we have more sophisticated joints, which are called fully tensioned joints or slip critical joints. In those cases, we now need to tighten the bolt much tighter. But what this snug tighten operation has done for us in preparation for that final tightening, which is actually called pre-tensioning, it's not a word I'm fond of, but that's the word we use, pre-tensioning the joint, we have a zero point. We have a place to start and we mark the bolt, we mark the nut, and we mark the socket and we mark the steel. And now we can turn the nut a certain number of degrees and that will tell us that we have achieved tension required to make those plies squeeze together tight enough to provide a fully tensioned joint or in a more sophisticated requirement what's called a slip critical joint, where we're not depending on the tension of the bolts to hold everything together, but the tension of the bolts providing friction between the plies as they are tightened together so tightly that they can't move or slip. And so we have a slip critical joint application there. So what does that have to do with other bolted joints? Well, it turns out that this method called angle or torque and angle, if you will, is a better method for tightening any joint, not just for structural joints. But the key is finding zero. So once we learn how to find a zero, that is the snug tightened position in any bolted joint, whether it's automotive or a piece of equipment or a structural joint, Now we can use angle as our method and angle is more precise. It's easier to train people to do. It's less likely to cause a problem. We don't need calibrated torque wrenches and so on. We even have a new product in the structural bolt world called the torque and angle joint where we have a special tool that gives us our snug tight with a low torque and then gives us our final tensioning with an angle. And those are very uh, new on the market. And if you're in the structural bolt world, you probably need to learn about the TNA product. And that'll be a topic of another faster training minute, as well as how do we actually know when we're in the steel that this method that we've chosen to use provides us this accurate amount of tension. So snug is the word of the day. I don't like the word because when I think of snug, I think of, you know, a hug, snug as a bug in a rug just kind of not very tight, but snug tight when it comes to bolts is actually a lot more than snug. It's pretty dang tight. So I hope you can use this information going forward, whether you're in the structural bolt world or in just any kind of assembly situation where you might want to consider using angle as your method for tightening the bolt instead of torque. Well, this has been Carmen Vertulo with the Fastener Training Minute coming to you again from Fastener Training Institute and AIM Testing Laboratory.
Well, hi, everyone. This is Carmen Vertulo with your Fastener Training Minute coming to you from the Fastener Training Institute and AIM Testing Laboratory in a beautiful El Cajon, California. And I got an email from one of our prime clients recently. If you don't know what an AIM prime client is, you should email me or see me in some event we might be at soon because, as Eric mentioned, I'm now a rock star, so I'll be touring the country soon. And uh, you can come and see me and ask for my autograph and ask me about what an AIM Prime client is. And I'll tell you. Anyway, today's topic is not about rock stars or AIM Prime clients. It's about the email I got from a Prime client regarding waxed nuts. And he wanted to know, should I be waxing my nuts? Well, that is a very appropriate question. When is it appropriate for you to be waxing your nuts? That might sound inappropriate, but it is an appropriate question. And when I come back, I'll tell you, men, when it is appropriate to be waxing your nuts. Thanks, Carmen. This is Joe Morris with the Fastener Training Institute. It is so great to be back to in-person instruction, and I am happy to announce some news. We have our acclaimed Certified Fastener Specialist week-long program has just undergone a complete refresh. We have a brand new curriculum. With the help from the Industrial Fasteners Institute, our Fastener Training Week now includes a lot more interactive content, revised class presentations, and expanded course outline. So our next week-long class is going to be hosted by the Pacific West Fastener Association in Los Angeles from November 29th through December 3rd. But before that, are any of you headed to Vegas? We are. FTI will be there and we are hosting a full day seminar instructed by Carmen Bertullo and Rob LaPointe from AIM Testing Lab. We're going to present value added service or costly mistake, key elements for the entire supply chain. This full day program will show users and suppliers how to detect and prevent risks associated with value added fastener services and maximize opportunity for a great result. This class is truly for everybody. So if you're a fastener distributor, if you're an end user, or if you're a manufacturer, whether you're in purchasing, sales, engineering, quality, you know what, even operations, you really need this class. Everybody does secondary processes. So you can register through the IFE website or directly with FTI. And lastly, we have recently launched a brand new webinar series called Fastener Basics Like Never Before, sponsored by Brighton Best International. It's a 21-part webinar series presented by Carmen Vertulo. You can join anytime we record all the sessions and you can still complete the full series. Come on, let's face it. Carmen, he is the master at webinar fastener training classes and he uses his talents to present each topic creatively using a ton of cameras. He's got great stories and in so much detail, you'll walk away an expert. This program covers all topics relevant to new fastener professionals and it's really a great precursor for any advanced learning that you want to do with FTI. So for more information about any of our webinars and our classes, please visit our website at www.fastenertraining.org. Thanks everyone. Now back to Carmen. Quality products, quality service, quality customers. That's 3Q Inc a fastener distributor unlike any you've worked with before. With its unique remote managed inventory stocking programs, wide array of secondary service offerings, and wholly owned cold forming capability, 3Q Inc. has been supporting fastener distributors since 2008. 3Q offers a wide range of 100% American-made fasteners, including 100% made in USA domestic lock washers, clevis pins and bolts, special ITW screw products, tap R, Boss screw, TL stud, and Griptide inserts, SEMS lock washer products, split lock washers, tooth lock washers, and square cone, as well as specialty and imported parts. Give 3Q a call today to discuss your needs and experience 3Q quality for yourself. 3Q Inc. www.3q-inc.com. All right, welcome back. This is Carmen Verzullo with the other half of the Fastener Training Minute, today talking about waxed nuts. In a nutshell, the Fastener industry requires that we wax our nuts whenever they come from ASTM A563 as the governing specification, and they are hot dip galvanized, and they're overtapped. The reason for that is Those nuts are used in uh, structural applications on other hot dip galvanized externally threaded fasteners, 
and therefore we would have a very uncontrolled torque tension relationship. Having the plain threads of the overtapped nut, it actually is going to be a heavy hex nut in most cases, going against the hot dip galvanized surface threads of the bolt, lots of friction in there, and we just are not properly able to control the torque tension relationship. So a lubricant is required. It doesn't have to be wax, but it's generally wax, and it is supposed to be dry to the touch, so it can't be like some oily, greasy stuff. And in some cases, even though it's not required, it should be colored. Most folks who supply these nuts will add coloring to the wax so we know it's there. There is a supplement in ASTMA 563, which requires when invoked that we add color to the wax. However, it's not required unless the supplement is invoked. Now, this particular question came our way not regarding an A563 nut, which the common grade is DH nuts, which we use with structural bolts such as ASTM A325 grade structural bolts. But this question had to do with 2H heavy hex nuts, which come from ASTM A194. A194 is not a structural bolt standard. It's a standard that covers fastening nuts in particular for high pressure, high temperature applications. And interestingly enough, it actually prohibits us to be coating these nuts with hot dip galvanizing or anything else unless the user specifically requests it. It turns out that in ASTM A563, we are allowed to substitute our DH nut with any other nut that has the same strength, that is proof load and hardness. And it turns out that in ASTM A194, the 2H nut is a perfect substitute for the A563 DH nut, and it's actually a very common nut, so it often is substituted. Of course, if we're going to over tap it, galvanize it, hot dip galvanize it, and over tap it, and wanting it to meet the requirements of the A563 DH nut, we would then also be required to add the wax. That's what the standard says. So in a nutshell again, all of our hot dip galvanized high strength nuts, whether they are DH or 2H, must be waxed. It doesn't matter if they're inch and a half or lower, which is where our structural bolts come from. It doesn't matter if they're coarse thread or eight pitch thread. You're virtually never going to see a fine thread hot dip galvanized product. If anyone has seen one, let me know, but it could be eight pitch. It could be coarse thread. Those nuts, which are hot dip galvanized and over tap need to be waxed. So men, women, wax your nuts appropriately. I hope you learned something. This has been Carmen Vertulo with your Fastener Training Minute. Thanks for listening. everybody. This is Carmen Vertulo with your Fastener Training Minute coming to you from the Fastener Training Institute and AIM Testing Laboratory in beautiful El Cajon, California. Today's topic comes as a result of a upcoming webinar or probably an already produced and seen webinar from the Fastener Training Institute's series on Fastener Basics. And that webinar topic is Blind Rivets. And there's something about blind rivets that most people misunderstand or believe that's not true necessarily. And when we come back, I'm going to explain to you what that little piece of information is that might totally turn your opinion around about how you think of blind rivets. Thanks, Carmen. This is Joe Morris with the Fastener Training Institute. It is so great to be back to in-person instruction, and I am happy to announce some news. 
We have our acclaimed Certified Fastener Specialist week-long program has just undergone a complete refresh. We have a brand new curriculum. With the help with, from the Industrial Fasteners Institute, our Fastener Training Week now includes a lot more interactive content, revised class presentations, and expanded course outline. So our next week-long class is going to be hosted by the Pacific West Fastener Association in Los Angeles from November 29th through December 3rd. But before that, are any of you headed to Vegas? We are. FTI will be there and we are hosting a full day seminar instructed by Carmen Bertullo and Rob LaPointe from AIM Testing Lab. We're going to present value added service or costly mistake key elements for the entire supply chain. This full day program will show users and suppliers how to detect and prevent risks associated with value added fastener services and maximize opportunity for a great result. This class is truly for everybody. So if you're a fastener distributor, if you're an end user, or if you're a manufacturer, whether you're in purchasing, sales, engineering, quality, you know what, even operations, you really need this class. Everybody does secondary processes. So you can register through the IFE website or directly with FTI. And lastly, we have recently launched a brand new webinar series called Fastener Basics Like Never Before, sponsored by Bright Invest International. It's a 21-part webinar series presented by Carmen Vertulo. You can join anytime we record all the sessions and you can still complete the full series. Come on, let's face it, Carmen, he is the master at webinar fastener training classes and he uses his talents to present each topic creatively using a ton of cameras. He's got great stories and in so much detail, you'll walk away an expert. This program covers all topics relevant to new fast professionals and it's really a great precursor for any advanced learning that you want to do with FTI. So for more information about any of our webinars and our classes, please visit our website at www.fastenertraining.org. Thanks everyone. Now back to Carmen. Quality products, quality service, quality customers. That's 3Q Inc a fastener distributor unlike any you've worked with before. With its unique remote managed inventory stocking programs, wide array of secondary service offerings, and wholly owned cold forming capability, 3Q Inc. has been supporting fastener distributors since 2008. 3Q offers a wide range of 100% American-made fasteners, including 100% made in USA domestic lock washers, clevis pins and bolts, special ITW screw products, tap R, Boss Screw, TL Stud, and Griptide Inserts, SEMS Lock Washer Products, Split Lock Washers, Tooth Lock Washers, and Square Cone, as well as specialty and imported parts. Give 3Q a call today to discuss your needs and experience 3Q quality for yourself. 3Q Inc. www.3q-inc.com Well, welcome back, everyone. This is Carmen Bertula with the Fastener Training Minute talking about blind rivets. If uh, you had an opportunity to watch our Blind Rivet Fastener Basics webinar, you already know this. And if you didn't have an opportunity to watch it, go to the Fastener Training Institute's website and look up the Fastener Basics webinar and watch that rivet webinar. Watch all the webinars, as a matter of fact. Well, it turns out for this particular webinar, we're going to be focusing on blind rivets and some other blind fasteners as well. And we have some help from our sponsors, Bright and Best International is going to give us some rivets and some hand tools. And GoBell has given us to use some power tools, electric rivet tools, pneumatic rivet tools, and a nut setting tool. And so you'll get to see those demonstrated in that webinar. But one of the things that I found out about blind rivets actually before my fastener career and kind of forgot about it and then took on the prevailing wisdom, and I've actually taught this concept, I think, incorrectly over the years, is that blind rivets are most appropriate to be used when we have an assembly that is not going to be taken apart. In other words, a permanent assembly with a nut and a bolt or a nut and a screw or a screw into a tapped hole, we can disassemble the thing pretty easily with some tools. And so if you desire to be able to disassemble whatever it is you're putting together, you shouldn't be using blind rivets. Well, that is completely not true. And I'll tell you how I learned it. Back in the day before my fastener career, I was designing and building test equipment for the Tomahawk cruise missile. And there were some electronic things in there. And we made these chassis that were about the size of a microwave oven, let's say. And they were made out of aluminum panels and sheets and extrusions with a bunch of circuit boards stuffed inside of them. 
And the design was such that all these aluminum parts would get a coating on them called chem film or chemical film. And then we would assemble them all together temporarily with screws and nuts, probably about number eight or number 10 size hardware. And then we would send that assembly out and get it powder coated. It looked bitchin'. I was so proud of them. They would look state of the art today if you saw them. And this was in the 1980s. Then they would come back and we would disassemble them put all the electronics in, put them back together with new hardware. And sometimes that disassembly was a pain because the powder coat would get in the threads of the screw. Later on, we learned how to use acorn cap nuts to keep that from happening. But nevertheless, it was a hassle taking them apart. And sometimes the tool would slip and you'd scratch the powder coat. Anyway, I wondered, why don't we just put these together with rivets, blind rivets, and then we'll drill the rivet out. So that's what we did. And we discovered that First off, the rivets, they went together 10 times faster, and they took just about the same amount of time to drill the head off of the rivet as it took to remove the screw, and it was much safer. And so my point to tell you is that rivets are not just a solution to an assembly problem when you want it to be permanent. You can remove a rivet very quickly and easily with a drill and replace it much quicker than you can a screw and a nut with the proper rivet tool. So stop thinking about rivets as a solution to an assembly problem when the assembly is permanent. We know this also from how airplanes are built. The skin of an airplane in most cases is held on with rivets, not screws. And uh, those rivets are regularly drilled out and replaced in order to remove a panel for an inspection or if it's damaged. And it is not a problem to replace riveted assemblies. So that's my lesson for the day. You may disagree, but I'm just telling you my opinion is let's use rivets even if the assembly is meant to be disassembled and reassembled in the future. Well, that's your Fastener Training Minute. This has been Carmen Vertulo. Thank you for listening.